From Creation Ministries International, you're listening to Creation.com's article podcast. The research and insights that give God the glory, refute evolution, and give you the answers to defend your faith. I'm Joseph Darnell. I remember the first time that I saw the movie The Day After Tomorrow, released in 2004. Only a few hours ago, I received word that a small group of people survived in New York City against all odds and in the face of tremendous adversity. I was fairly young with a wild imagination. So when our community experienced a hailstorm shortly after, I thought that we were about to experience another ice age. I even started planning how our family and I would survive. Now, years later, with a more informed understanding of the science behind the actual ice age, I am convinced that there is no reason to fear we will experience another big freeze. Regrettably, most people don't know what caused the Ice Age, and that only the biblical creation model can explain it. This has resulted in some, I think, unwarranted panic and confusion on issues like climate change, and whether or not the Earth is heading into another Ice Age as in the day after tomorrow. Let's put those worries to rest. Today, Ice sheets and glaciers cover approximately 15 million square kilometers of the Earth's total land mass, roughly 10% of its land surface. Both young Earth and old Earth scientists agree that this is left over from an ice age. But there is much disagreement as to the number of ice ages that have occurred throughout Earth's history, as well as over what causes an ice age to start and end. A proper understanding of these issues will help us in regards to whether Earth might face another ice age in the future. Those who believe the Earth is billions of years old argue that there have been multiple ice ages throughout Earth's history, the most recent of which ended about 10,000 years ago. Proposed causal mechanisms of these massive glaciations have included large meteorite impacts, supervolcano eruptions, and changes in things such as atmospheric carbon dioxide, the sun's output, and the moon's orbit. The most popular model today relies on so-called Milankovitch cycles, which posit that fluctuations of about 2 degrees in the Earth's axle tilt every 41,000 years, and changes in its elliptical orbit around the Sun every 100,000 years, would produce a cooler climate. The proposed effects of these mechanisms are much reduced precipitation, with rainfall half of what it is today, and global average temperatures about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius below today's. A major difficulty with all these ideas is that the proposed effects in global temperatures are too small to trigger an ice age, leading old Earth scientists to further propose positive feedback mechanisms to amplify the change. However, these are unsubstantiated. An even bigger problem is that, while the proposed changes could account for the freezing of the oceans, simply cooling down the Earth's temperature will not cause ice to build up on the continents. Instead, it would create a cold desert, like most of northern Siberia and Antarctica today. In order for continental ice buildup to occur, there would need to be increased precipitation of ice and snow, and unfortunately for old Earth scientists, all the proposed theories can only account for temperature change. A plausible explanation for an ice age needs a mechanism that would provide not only lower temperatures, but also increased precipitation of ice and snow. And finally, proponents of these views remain in the dark as to why an ice age would end. That is, why the snow and ice would cease to accumulate and begin to thaw. We'll get to the Young Earth model right after a short break. Some things are best learned hands-on, while other subjects are good to read or listen about. Oh, and another great medium, film is one of the best tools for Christians and skeptics that want to research and be informed. That's why CMI recommends you watch the documentary film Is Genesis History? This 103 minute long documentary looks at the world and explains how the evidence intersects with the history recorded in Genesis. From rock layers to fossils to lions to stars, this fascinating film will challenge and change the way that you see the world. Dr. Del Tackett, creator of The Truth Project, serves as your guide hiking through canyons, climbing up mountains, and diving below the sea in an exploration of two competing views and one compelling truth. 
The documentary features top-notch footage and over a dozen scientists and scholars, including our very own Dr. Robert Carter. The film is a fascinating look at the biblical, historical, and scientific evidence for creation and the flood. So stream the video on the website or order a DVD or Blu-ray of Is Genesis History at creation.com slash store. Contrary to old earth ideas, models based on biblical history propose that only one ice age has occurred and that it took place subsequent to and as a direct result of the global flood about 4,500 years ago. This ice age is understood to correspond to what old earthers call the Pleistocene ice age, what they say is 1.8 million years long in the old earth timeline. Though taking place over a much shorter span of time for the biblical timeline, about 700 years. As for the supposed earlier ice ages, examination of the evidence indicates that the features are different from those of the Pleistocene one. They are better interpreted as huge underwater landslides caused by massive sediment movement during the flood. Unlike old earth scientists, young earth scientists have a scientific model, drawing on the events of the flood, that can explain both the beginning and the end of the ice age. The catastrophic tectonic and volcanic activities during the flood would have made the post-flood oceans warmer than they are today, evidenced in ice core samples. This caused much greater evaporation, leading to increased precipitation of ice and snow, allowing ice to accumulate on the continents. Furthermore, all that volcanism would release fine volcanic dust and aerosols high into the atmosphere, reflecting a larger percentage of sunlight back into space keeping the interiors of the continents cooler in summer than today. This would prevent the snow and ice that fell on the continents in winter from fully melting the following summer, allowing the ice to build up from year to year. It is estimated that the ice accumulated for approximately 500 years following the flood. Once the oceans had cooled, reducing the evaporation, and the atmospheric dust and aerosols had cleared, it would have taken about 200 years for the ice sheets to retreat to near where they are today. Thus, the global flood provides the necessary conditions for the beginning and the end of the Ice Age, with its end ushering in the typical temperature fluctuations experienced today. Now, to answer the question, will there be another Ice Age? Old Earth models not only require multiple Ice Ages in the past, they also suggest that the Earth will face more in the future. Given the lack of consensus among long Earth scientists as to what causes an ice age, they have much difficulty predicting, according to their models, when another might happen. While many think that global warming and climate change will save us from the next ice age, media hype has given the impression that it will actually trigger it through its supposed effects on oceanic circulation. But the proposed effects of global warming and climate change are in any case insufficient to trigger an ice age. Regardless, the history in Genesis implies that the Earth is a highly stable ecosystem. Considering that its climate returned to equilibrium following the incredibly large deviation caused by the flood, this knowledge can usefully inform our thinking about climate models and concerns, and our responses to them. Whatever the latest media buzz, we can safely predict that the world will not see another ice age. This is founded on the confidence that the account of the global flood in the book of Genesis is true, and that the flood is what triggered the ice age. In Genesis 9-11, God made a covenant with Noah, saying, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. Logically. If the Ice Age was caused by the Flood, the only model to date that explains the Ice Age, then since God has promised to never again send such a Flood, we should not expect another such Ice Age either. Ever. The Creation.com article podcast is hosted by me, Joseph Darnell. You will find lots of interesting related content in the links and show notes. This episode's article was written by Cody Gitta. Be sure to listen to our other show, Creation.com Talk. Visit our events page to find a creationist giving a presentation in your local area. If you'd like to help us, become a monthly supporter at Creation.com slash donate. If you want the latest noteworthy research and news, subscribe to Creation Magazine and check out the Journal of Creation. 
from everyone at creation.com. Thanks for listening.